Hello everyone. Welcome to Master Means PYQ program of Next IAS. So today we are back again with the third question of internal security that was asked in UPSC CHC Mains 2023. I hope you all might have already seen this question in my last discussion video and by now you might have written the answer to this question and submitted for free evaluation. If you are yet to write it kindly write it now and submit it for evaluation. So let us discuss the question of the day. The question says what are the internal security challenges being faced by India? Give out the role of central intelligence and investigative agencies tasked to counter such threats. And it was a 15 marker which was to be written in 250 words. If you look at this particular question, this particular question caters to this subtopic of security forces and agencies and their mandate of your internal security syllabus of GS3. Now, if we analyze the past year papers of UPSC, we will see that this particular topic that what are the internal security challenges faced by India, this is basically umbrella topic. This is some uh, kind of topic which covers your entire internal security syllabus in itself. If we look at the past year papers in 2021, UPSC asked a particular question where it asked that uh, state the various challenges that are being posed by external state and non-state actors to the internal security of India. In 2015, it talked about a particular agency that is AFSPA. But in remaining years also, it continued to ask, sometime it asked about how money laundering poses a threat to the internal security of India. Somewhere it talked about cyber security, somewhere it talked about some other factor or some other agency like other some terrorist organization that how they are posing the challenges to internal security of India. So basically it was talking about some about some specific subtopics of your syllabus. But in this particular year of 2023, it is asked a very umbrella topic, a very big topic that subsides every part of your syllabus. So the answer to this particular question can has to be very vast. Now if we go about the approach of this particular question, the approach to this answer will be in my introductory part, we can talk about internal security of India very briefly. Then in my body part 1, we can talk about the internal security challenges being faced by India. And basically there are n number of challenges. So we can divide it into traditional as well as non-traditional challenges where we will try to highlight what are the new challenges, the emerging challenges of the 21st century. Then my body part 2, we will have to highlight the role of central investigation and intelligence agencies. So we will divide this also under two sub parts, that role of intelligence agencies as well as role of investigative agencies. And finally, we will conclude our answer on an optimistic note that what more needs to be done or you can call it a favor, way forward also. So basically this will be my brief approach to this particular answer. I have told you in past also that this approach is one idea that helps us develop, that helps us meet every demand of the question part by part. So if we talk about the introductory remarks of this particular answer, internal security as a subset of national security, it basically, it is basically concerned with the threats and the challenges that are emanating from within the country but they have the potential to disrupt the public order as well as the national security of your country. So the point is that India has been facing a number of and very serious internal security challenges since independence. If we compare these internal security challenges with the time of 1980s and 1990s, the magnitude of the challenges of the present times is very less. Why so? Because at that particular time, the, 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 the actors like China and Pakistan, they were giving direct support to these armed militants. Basically, with the advent of technology and in this 21st century, India's challenges are very dynamic, are very uh, challenging. But still, it is to the credit of the people of the country as well as to the credit of the central investigation and intelligence agencies that none of the internal security challenge could ever overwhelm the country. India, by after every particular challenge, has grown stronger, has uh, basically given a very positive response to that particular challenge and learned from it. So this could have been my brief introductory remark. We could have even cut short it because our introduction has to be limited to uh, some 30-40 words. So in my body part 1, we will talk about internal security challenges that are being faced by India. 
See people you have to understand this one thing that under this umbrella topic of internal security challenges we have n number of challenges that are being faced by India but when we have the limitation of 250 words we cannot write all of them so what we will do we will try to confine our answer with eight or nine major points and we can divide these points under two subheadings traditional as well as non traditional challenges so if we talk about traditional challenges the first challenge that comes to our mind is left wing extremism left wing extremism refers to the political ideology who uh, wants societal as well as political changes through revolutionary means the origin of left wing extremism in india can be traced back to 1967 that is in a place called naxalbadi in west bengal if we go by the recent report of ministry of home affairs then it claims that the incidents of left wing extremism have gone down by 76% in 2022 if we compare it with 2010 see you have to understand this one thing that while writing these internal security challenges either you have to justify those challenges giving one recent example or one recent fact the next traditional challenge that comes to our mind is insurgency northeast basically northeastern region of the country comprises of eight states which are connected with the heartland of india through siliguri corridor there are various ethnic groups there in uh, northeast who are who have always been in conflict with each other or with the main demand of the main heartland of the country because of various cultural factors language barriers and there are groups like people liberation front of assam or you call it nationalist socialist council of nagaland khapling these are the armed insurgent groups of northeast who have been raising demands time and again for either a borderland like a separate homeland for a particular ethnic group so this is another challenge for the country like to tackle them before they get support of the external state or non state actors and act and basically react in a negative way then the third point that comes to our mind is cross border terrorism basically india shares 15106.7 km of land border with many countries so basically the this large border is very difficult to be managed the, uh, the border is porous also at many instances given the use of the modern technology also we see that at multiple places the the issues of like arms smuggling drug uh, uh, trafficking these are very common even the illegal migration of the people uh, to even carry this terrorist attack this is also a very common instance across this border so this is a major challenge that is being faced by india then the next point that comes to our mind is linkage of organized crime with terrorism so what is this organized crime that when terrorism is being linked with narco terrorism that is drug traffic trafficking or you call it arms smuggling basically try to understand this one thing that india as a country is sandwiched between golden crescent and golden triangle golden crescent refers to three countries afghanistan pakistan and iran and golden uh, triangle refers to three countries like myanmar thailand and laos so these six countries they are home to basically uh, they are a uh, home to drug production the the drug production in these countries is very large india is sandwiched between them so uh, because of the factor of being sandwiched between these two triangles the drug trafficking in india is very large when this drug trafficking gets confined gets aligned with terrorism then that the money that is being earned through this drug trafficking is being used to spread terror in india which is again a big concern for a country like india in my last discussion video also i talked about the fact that 1 kg of heroin that is drug which cost just 6000 us dollar in pakistan the same heroin packet of 1 kg cost more than 1 lakh 20000 dollar in a country like india and when it enters the uh, these metropolitan cities like delhi and mumbai its cost uh, turns out to be 6 lakh dollars so that is the basically the money earned by them is being used by these terror outfits to spread terror in a country like india next point can be the next internal security challenge can be jammu and kashmir militancy we have talked about this also in our last video that even after the uh, this revocation of article 370 there have been instances of terror attacks in jammu and kashmir time and again but according to a report by mha recently ministry of home affairs last year in 2022 only 10 local people were recruited by these terrorist organization as compared to 110 in the year 2021 that shows that the strategy of winning of hearts and minds as well as the uh, the basically other measures by the government are bearing fruits there so that is a result of this report another challenge uh, that we can be termed out uh, as a traditional threat to uh, india is illegal immigrants we know that post this military coup in myanmar 
these refugees have been illegally immigrating into country like India. Even we know the this Briu refugee crisis, Briu, the Ryang community of Tripura that has been living in this Tripura refugee camp since almost 20 plus years. Basically, when these migrants, they uh, come to a country illegally, they also basically strive for resources. Then there are language barriers, there are cultural barriers. They fight among the people of that particular uh, region and they are a threat to the internal security of the country. Why? Because the original people of that particular state, that particular region, they also strive for resources and then, then they come out on uh, roads and they fight. So these were some of the traditional challenges that uh, the challenges that were being faced by India. Now if you talk about non-traditional challenges, the emerging challenges of 21st century, then the first challenge that comes to our mind is cyber warfare. And this cyber warfare can take uh, shape of ransomware attack also. This can take uh, help uh, shape of digital sovereignty also, data leakage and so on. I hope you all are uh, aware of the fact that there was a recent attack, ransomware attack on the Ames hospital. So now you can imagine if a hospital like Ames can be attacked, uh, can, can face a ransomware attack, then just try to imagine the basically uh, just try to imagine how big how severe this uh, issue in present century is but according to a recent report by uh, microsoft india is home to 13 percent of the cyber attacks in asia pacific region making it one of the three most affected countries of asia pacific region 13 percent of the all cyber attacks are being faced by india according to a recent report by microsoft the second issue can be that of a maritime security Basically, India's ports, coast, have already been basically a victim of sea piracy or uh, like we remember the this 2008 attack of Mumbai. Where these terrorists, they took help of sea route only to intrude to a country like India. So this is again a major issue where, uh, which is a big challenge for a country like India. The third and the most emerging challenge is money laundering. Basically, what is money laundering? Money laundering is concealing the identity of the illegally earned money to give the image as if it is a legally earned and a, and a basically white money. If we go by the report of uh, this United Nation, then it says that 2 to 5 percent of the global GDP is the basically value of the laundered money in India. That is, it refers to somewhere around 800 trillion dollar. So this is something too big to even imagine. 800 million dollar to 200 trillion dollar is the amount of money that is being laund that is being laundered from india so these are some of the non traditional threats if you talk about more threats it is like fake currency rackets If we happen to remember the time of demonetization, before the original currency was in the market, we happen to see that the duplicate currency, fake Indian currency notes were also there. If you go by the reports of Ministry of Home Affairs, then after the years of 2016, fake Indian currency notes worth rupees 252.2 crores have already been arrested by, uh, recovered by these law enforcement agencies. Then we have this lone wolf attack. National Investigation Agency, it recently highlighted that in Hyderabad, the Pakistani-based ISI as well as this lashkar e taiba they were recruiting as well as they were giving this uh, hand grenade to their sympathizers to carry out a lone wolf attack in Hyderabad. Then we have another uh, issue, another internet uh, challenge in form of social media, that is social networking sites. This can take various shapes like honey trapping, or you call it youth radicalization or you call it hate speech. You might have seen recent instance where a DRDO scientist was honey trapped and basically he was providing all those critical defense information to the women to just have an intimate relationship with her. So these are another big emerging challenges of the modern century that India faces and we have to basically counter them through with the help of uh, investigation and intelligence agencies. So here comes my second part of the body where I have to talk about the basically role of these investigation as well as intelligence agencies. Basically intelligence is about getting information about your adversary, their intention, their ability, their next move and everything. So these various investigation as well as in, uh, these intelligence agencies, they try to do their best to counter these challenges that are being faced by India. So first if we talk about investigation agencies, the first agency that we should talk about is CBI. 
that is Central Bureau of Investigation. This is one of the most premier uh, investigation agency of India that deals with various security issues including the corruption uh, cases against the government officials. You might have recently seen that CBI has registered multiple cases against this uh, military engineering services officers. Why? Because they gave a work contract, favor of work contract to some company without getting any work executed. How is this a threat to the national security of India? Basically, it is an economic threat. If they are giving economic advances, they are wasting the resources of the country. That resource cannot be used in some other places or that resource may be misused by the other people, the other external state and non-state actors sitting outside. They can misuse it against the country like India itself. The next agency, investigative agency that comes to our mind is National Investigative Agency that is NIA. It was formed in 2008. It also derives its powers from this 2008 Act. Basically, its major uh, role is to uh, investigate the terrorism related issues. You might have recently seen that NIA in, uh, conducted raids in Telangana as well as Tamil Nadu. Why? Because it busted a racket of IS recruitment. There it busted a racket where ISIS recruitment was going on of the young people. It busted that rac racket by conducting raids. And we have uh, ample examples to prove the efficacy of NIA where it conducts raids and uh, n number of events to basically keep our country secure. Third is your economic directorate. This is basically a economic intelligence wing as well as a law enforcement agency of India. It uh, basically prevents those economic instances, economic frauds in the country. Uh, according to recent data of uh, given in the parliament by given in the parliament by the ministry, basically this ED enforcement directorate has registered three thousand one hundred ten cases of under money laundering, and it registered more than twelve thousand complaints regarding this economic enforcement, economic investigation, economic issues in the country in last one year. So this is basically the level of economic frauds that is going on in the country and these are th all threats to internal security of the country. And for that, these investigation agencies like CBI, NI and ED have been taking various steps and uh, they are trying to exploit these modern technologies to be at par or be one step ahead with these uh, negative elements. Now, if we talk the role of intelligence agencies, then we have agencies like RO, Research and Analysis Wing of India. Basically, it deals with external intelligence. It has to give external intelligence to the domestic intelligence, investigation intelligence agencies so that we are very well aware in advance about the threats that can come to our country from those external borders. And we have ample examples to prove the efficacy of RO in past where it has done wonders to us. Next, an in intelligence agency can be Intelligence Bureau. Basically, the raid by NIA, National Investigation Agency, recently in September 22, 2022, against the Popular Front of India. It was, uh, they arrested more than 100 people there. What was the basis of that raid? It was this IB evidence. The evidence given by Intelligence Bureau formed the basis of that NIA raids. So what is the Intelligence Bureau doing? It is trying to gather intelligence from various parts of the country to hand it over to various other agencies so that they can secure the country. They can basically ensure that every possible thing is taken place before time. Next, we can talk about NTRO, National Technical Research Organization. It was faced, uh, it was formed after this Kargil war. When this Girish Chandra Saxena committee was set up to basically strengthen the intelligence sector of the country. The main task of this NTRO is to strengthen the intelligence agencies of the country. Next, we can talk about this Directorate of Revenue Intelligence. This deals in smuggling. Basically, it has to prevent anti-smuggling activities in the country. It has to ensure that the smuggling activities taking across India's borders are uh, controlled. They are taken into picture. It recently issued a notice to OPPO regarding customs duty of 4,000 plus crores. So it is also dealing with economic things that it, if it finds that a particular agency, a particular company, a particular institute is avoiding this custom duty and everything. So it issues a notice to them and it is also like it is indulging in anti-smuggling activities in the country. So these were some of the intelligence agencies. See, when, when you have to write, tackle such an answer, you have ample content to write, but you have to limit your answer to 250 words. Next, if we are short of words, you can also talk about way forward that we have to talk about inter-agency cooperation. That is the need of the hour that once this inter-agency cooperation is there among these so many agencies, there are a number of agencies. There are so many more which we cannot discuss due to paucity of time and words with us. So inter-agency cooperation is another thing that 
needs to be strengthened. Then given the robust cyber security measures, given the demand of the 21st century, we have to focus more on strengthening our cyber security measures. Then we have to also work on strengthening the uh, basically security at our borders so that these other ill-minded uh, Ill negative groups, they do not get uh, basically entry to our country and they can execute their targets. Another threat that I forgot to discuss is UAV. As you have discussed in the last uh, video also, this is another major non-traditional threat, a threat by unmanned aerial vehicles. We have seen a drone attack on the Jammu and Kashmir, this Jammu Air Base in 2021, where the two drones, they uh, basically threw the IEDs there and they devastated the Jammu Air Base. So this is another major concern on this also we have to basically work upon. So this was all about my body part. Finally, if you have to conclude, either we can conclude with the help of way forward that we have just talked about, or we can also say basically India's internal security challenges are here to remain. That is not something that it was a talk of the past and it will no more be there in future. It will be, it will remain. But if India is ensuring, India is trying to revamp its picture on an external uh, side that we want our Im image globally to be very strong, we also have to be conscious of the internal security challenges. So the steps taken by the country are in the right direction but we have to always be in tune with the changing demand of the uh, society the changing demand of the technology and we have to ensure that our country is safeguarded from every possible ill element that's all about this answer i hope it was fruitful i hope you find it useful if you find it useful kindly like it share it and comment on the video your comments will try to basically benefit us by making those changes in the upcoming videos and try to ensure that this video reaches to every possible upsc aspirant uh, hope to meet you in some other video. Thank you. Keep writing.